You again, welcome back to this now third episode of this tutorial series about the Oculus Quest path through. After learning how to set it up and customize its look, now in this video I will show you how to customize its shape. By the way, if you are enjoying these tutorials, make sure to subscribe and leave a like as the channel is brand new, this is really important. Also, I'm working on an extra episode that will feature making a portal in augmented reality with the path through. And this tutorial will be posted on my Patreon where you will also be able to download all the source code of all of my projects. Project. But now, without further ado, let's get started with our tutorial. Okay, so we are inside Unity uh, with uh, the latest change that we made with here, this little canvas that we used to change the look of path through. So just before continuing this tutorial, because I don't want uh, this canvas to always show, I think it would be better to here click on it and uh, deactivate it and to just enable it by the press of a button. So for this, I'm going to go here in the path through manager. Then we can double click on the path through manager script that we made last time. Okay, I'm just going to add a reference at the top of uh, the canvas. So by creating a public game object uh, called path through styler canvas. There you go. And now what I'm going to do is simply uh, to toggle it when we are pressing on a button. So we can do if OVR input dot get down and I'm going to take the button uh, four. And if it's the case, what we want to do is take our styler and do set active and give here the opposite state of the path through styler with path through styler canvas dot active self. Okay, and finally, don't forget to add the canvas in the pass through styler canvas variable that we just made. Okay, so now let's see how we can customize the geometry of path through. So right now, path through is a big sphere surrounding us. But what if we only wanted to show it on part of the game? And this is what custom projection surface does. By using multiple objects around ourselves, we can use them as projection object for the path through and only show path through through these objects. I don't know if it makes sense, but you will see how it works in a few seconds. So first thing first, to create a custom projection surface, what we need to do is go in the OVR path through layer that we have. And as you can see, we have at the top here, projection surface reconstructed. And we don't want it this way, we want it to be user defined. Okay, now that it is done, we can uh, here go and right click on uh, the ER key, go to 3D object and create any type of object that we want to use as projection surface. And for this case, I think I will just go with a simple quad over there, as you can see, we can place it in front of the player like this. And we can even scale it up a little bit. And this way we will have here the path through showing on all of the surface and not all around us. Okay, next. To set this surface as a projection surface, we are going to create a new script. We can click here on add component and add the set as projection surface element script. Okay, so on this script, we will only need two elements. We'll need a public reference to the OVR path through layer that we will call layer. Oh, I mean our, that we will call path through. There you go. And next, we want a public Boolean called update transform that we can set to false at first. And you will see the purpose of this uh, Boolean value in a few seconds. And then all of the job is done here with a simple line of code, which will be path through dot add surface geometry. We can simply give the game object on the script. And for the update transform, we can use here the update transform boolean that we just made. And what this boolean does is say if the surface that we add needs to be updated each time. So this is really useful. For example, if you want a projection surface on a moving object around you, uh, and in this case, you want to set this uh, value to true, but otherwise, if it's just a cube that is not moving, just keep it this way and set it to false. Okay, and another thing that I want to do is actually to get 
as a component the mesh renderer and to simply set it to false because we actually don't want this mesh renderer at all the projection surface only use here this mesh filter object on this thing so we can even remove here the mesh collider as well and now what's left for us to do is drag here the OVR camera big which contain the OVR path through layer on this object right there and as mentioned before I don't want to move this quad so I'm just going to uh, set the update transform to false and now let's test our game by going to file and clicking on build and run okay so here you go we are inside our application by the way here you can see that with the uh, four button here that i press i can toggle here the ui as before but now we have a big change as you can see, the path through is only showing on part of the screen uh, by the quad that we just added in our game, which is behind here uh, the cube. And everything still works like before. So, for example, we can still change the look and everything will still work. It's just that now path through is not showing all around us but only on the projected surface that we have defined. Okay, so, and that's not it. Multiple things are possible here with the custom projection surface. For example, you can have multiple objects around your scene. What you simply have to do is just to add this set as projection surface element component, and it will be used as an element to be projected on for the path through. Okay, so now let's jump on the next topic. Now we can see that we can decompose uh, the projection to multiple elements that uh, we want around the player, but how can we control the depth of pass-through? What I mean is this. If we go to OVR camera rig, we already saw that we can change the placement from underlay to overlay. What that means is that we can say if our pass-through will be behind everything or in front of everything. But is there a way to not have one or the other, but to play with the depths on different elements? And this is an important feature. And the common issue of this problem can be found here. But we have a cube that is showing over there. And as we saw earlier, the path through is shown behind this cube. But unfortunately, so this means that if we we move our hands in front of the cube, our hand will be shown behind the cube, which will be enough really immersive to make it feel like the cube is in our world right now. We need to show the hands in front of the cube and I'm going to show you how. So by the way, uh, just on uh, a note here, uh, I wanted to show you how this works and using the material on the end tracking, but unfortunately, I just found that with this version of the Oculus integration, uh, the end tracking does not work with Path 3 for now. This issue should be fixed uh, really soon, but for now, I will be uh, I I will have to show you how this works, not using hand tracking, but using some sphere that I'm going to create under our our left and right hand. So let me just show you how. We can select both our left hand and our right hand. Go to a right click 3D object sphere. And as you can see, this create two sphere. We can uh, press on R to open the scale tool and scale them both down. And now to create a material that will say to show the path through on these elements, what we need to do is go here in asset, right click, go to create a material and call this one selective path through. Now in the shader, we can search for selective path through. As you can see, we have this one that is made inside the Oculus integration. Now we can select both our sphere and drag here the material in the mesh renderer of both sphere. Perfect. Now, as you can see, if we build the game like this, it will not work because we need to increase the render queue on the material. So we can increase it from 2000 to 4000, for example. And now if we build our game. So for now, it seems like nothing has changed. But if we move our hand in front here of the cube, as you can see, our hands now appear in front of the cube. And now what happens if I pass my hand through the cube? As you can see, when my hands is in front, I can see it. But when it's behind, it's behind the cube. And the combination of the two effects 
does really a great job. And now this thing is really interesting by combining different elements in the scene. So for example here we have absolutely nothing in the scene right now but if we add a real environment, I mean like a real 3D scene that is around us, we could only show the selective path through on our hands and still be immersed in the virtual environment. So, so just to give you here a quick example we can go to lighting which you can find here by going to windows, rendering and then lighting then on environment and now for the skybox material we can search for default uh, skybox and click on it so this creates a default skybox in our scene but it's not used by the VR camera so we need to go now in the center I ensure and now if we click on a skybox this will create a skybox around our player that we will be able to see but this time we can keep it because we will still have the um, path through showing in our hand because we added here the selective path through shader so let me just show you how it works by building it Oh, and here is the result. As you can see, I have a skybox around our scene, but now we have something really interesting because we have here the path through showing in our hand using the selective path through element that we made. But wait, there is more because as we saw before, when we have our hand in front of the cube, it show our hand but if we make it behind the cube it show the cube but what if we wanted to always show path through and all of this can be found here in the parameter of the selective path through material as you can see we have here a z test which can be set to different value and which will change how the sphere appears compared to other object in the scene. So for example, let's see how this works if I click on always over there. Okay, and as you can see, this is the result over there to change the Z test from always. As you can see, even if my hands are behind here, the cube, it will always show the path through in front of uh, the object. But now, for example, if we set it to greater of or equal, we will have the effect that the path through will only show when we are colliding the cube. But I mean, if you are looking for a normal behavior using uh, the selective path through material, I suggest you to set it to less or equal. And as you can see, it does a really nice job of showing in front or behind the object and it's in my opinion the best setting to use and I mean everything still works with it so for example we have the uh, projection surface that is still working as you can see it only show on that part of the screen even like this but even more than that we still have the customization working so for example we can have this type of behavior as you can see and everything still holds and is looking in my opinion pretty nice. There you go, this was all about your uh, setting and changing the depth of path through uh, with the custom selective path through shader. I just wanted to finish this tutorial by showing you another type of feature that is possible with path through and it's simply to add multiple path through in your game. And that's right, we can use multiple path through. So if we right click and go to create empty, we can call this one second path through. There you go. And I'm going to reset here its position like this. And I'm going to add a Novia path through layer as we did before. And so for example here, what I'm going to do is change the placement from overlay to underlay as I want to show it behind. But what I'm going to do is just to uh, duplicate here this squad to rotate it 19 degrees like this and we can place it be below our player. And now I'm going to use this squad over there for our second path through. So we can do so by changing the projection surface from 
reconstruct that to user defined and now for the new quad that we have i'm going to drag here the second path through in the path through element and there you go i think that everything is ready uh, except for one thing that is the most important so as we saw earlier we have this path through over there and now we have this second path through but now the question is which path through will be shown in front of the other. We can change the rendering order between these two layers using here the composition depth. And as you can see from that little text, depth value used to sort layer in the scene, smaller value appears in front. And so in my case, I think I will change here this composition depth to minus one. This way it will be show below here this quad over there. Now let's just save and build the scene once for all. Okay, and here it is, the final result. Now, as you can see, it seems that nothing has changed from uh, the, the earlier build, but now, as you can see, we have path through showing under us as well. But this path through is not using the same path through layer as before, and I'm just going to prove it to you. So if we make our path through styler user interface appear, and that we change here up the path through layer. As you can see from uh, the other uh, path through layer, we have it changed to another color, but the second path through layer that we place under us remains the same. And that's how you can uh, use multiple path through layer and, and say which one you want it to be shown in front. And there it is, that's the end of the tutorial series. Now, don't leave yet, there are more to come, but you have to subscribe to not miss them. And if you guys want to see me cover a particular topic next, comment your ID down below. Big thank you also to my new Patreon who joined this month. And if like them, you want to have access to all of the source code of my project, plus exclusive content like this extra path through tutorial on how to make a portal, join us, the link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.